What if I told you ETFs might actually be costing you money and reducing your returns? In this video, I'll be exploring scenarios where this might be the case. ETFs are one of the greatest innovations of the 2000s in the financial world, providing investors with a convenient way to diversify their portfolios and gain exposure to various asset classes. However, it's crucial to recognize that like any investment vehicle, ETFs come with their own set of drawbacks and risks that could impact your overall returns. This is what I'll be covering in this video. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe down below to see all of my future content in the personal finance and investing space. Let's get into it. When it comes to investing in shares, you have a few options. First, of course, you can invest directly into individual shares, something like Apple, Amazon, Netflix, that kind of thing. Second, you have unlisted funds. These are provided by a fund manager, where they invest in an assortment of companies on your behalf, bundling them up and selling units in the fund to investors. The sale takes place either directly or through an intermediary, like a broker, but never through the public stock exchange. KiwiSaver is a good example of this. And finally, you have exchange traded funds, or ETFs for short. These are like the unlisted funds, but are instead sold on a stock exchange. Investing in either a listed or an unlisted fund will both give you the same access to invest in the stock market. Now, a common approach these funds take is to closely track an index. An index is simply a reference portfolio that a company or person puts together, which others look at and think, hmm, that looks pretty good to me. It's like how at some point someone realized bundling a burger, some fries, and soda together was a good combination. It's the same with an index, but with company shares. One of the world's largest indexes is the S&P 500, which assembles various weightings in the top 500 traded companies in the United States. This includes companies like Google, Tesla, Pfizer, among 497 others. Many funds, both listed and unlisted, track the S&P 500, tracking the reference index as best they can to replicate its exact returns. An example of a listed fund tracking the S&P 500 index is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. Or more locally, there's also the SmartShares US 500 fund offered by the NZX. An example of an unlisted fund is Colonel's S&P 500 fund. So clearly, there are many ways to invest in a fund that tracks an index, both listed and unlisted. Now we come to the purpose of this video, which is to separate the two and investigate circumstances that might result in lower returns when choosing to invest in the index through a listed ETF vehicle. First up, we have taxes. There is a great piece of New Zealand tax law around investment funds that have some exceptional advantages to investors. Registering as a portfolio investment entity often abbreviated to PIE fund, has two main advantages for unlisted funds. The first of these is paying less tax, but this is applied differently depending on how you invest. While income tax can go as high as 39% in New Zealand, PIE funds have a maximum rate of just 28%. This is called the prescribed investor rate, or PIR. Here is a table showing you just how different the tax rates can be. As New Zealand investors, if you earn dividends from individual shares, or offshore ETFs, you'll be taxed at your resident withholding tax rate, which aligns with the income tax levels. If, on the other hand, we invest in a local PI ETF, such as SmartShares, the maximum PIR rate of 28% will apply in all cases. The issue here, of course, is that many investors earn below $48,000 a year and are therefore paying too much in tax when we invest in local ETFs. The investor can claim this in their tax return at the end of the financial year, but those funds have remained uninvested for some time. Unlisted PIE funds allow you to disclose which PIR rate is the right one given your annual income level. When it comes to paying tax on your investment returns, you could be taxed at a lower 17.5 or even 10.5%. The second tax advantage of unlisted funds is the deferring of paying tax. When investing in ETFs and individual shares, taxes are usually withheld from dividends at the time they're paid. This means the tax is sitting uninvested for a period of time, sitting as cash, not generating a return. With unlisted PIE funds, however, the amount remains invested for longer and is only due upon the sale or at the end of the tax year. This is also important when we consider tax credits in the underlying shares, as it gives time for the fund manager to offset your tax burden before the end of the tax year, meaning you may avoid having to pay a tax burden at all, depending on your circumstances. So taxes are an important consideration when it comes to investing, and in some cases, putting your money into ETFs may actually be costing you money. Now the second way ETFs might be costing you money is through what's called dividend drag. When an ETF receives a dividend from a company it has invested in, it does one of two things with it. First, it can reinvest those funds back into company shares. Or second, it can pass these dividends through to investors. This is usually done quarterly, 
or worse, twice a year. Dividend drag basically explains the time lag between the fund receiving the dividend and either reinvesting it or giving it to investors. While the dividend sits as cash within the fund, it isn't earning a return, which essentially drags the fund's performance away from the underlying index it's trying to replicate. Over a span of a few years, this drag can significantly reduce the fund's returns. This term is often referred to as the tracking error, and the smaller this is, generally the better. Unlisted funds are often more agile in reducing this tracking error, but you need to look into the funds to ensure this is the case. Investing in individual shares is the most advantageous here, as all investors are paid on the same day. Without a fund sitting in between the investors and their dividends, there is no drag to speak of. With the option to reinvest directly into those shares through a dividend reinvestment plan, sometimes even at a discount, this can be a major upside for investors with conviction about a specific stock. A dividend reinvestment plan can often avoid our third disadvantage of ETFs as well, so it pays to look into these if you invest in individual shares. Moving along, we have our third and final disadvantage to investing in ETFs, and that of course is fees. There are many fees that you should be aware of when you're investing, which include brokerage fees, management fees, foreign exchange fees, the list goes on. Unfortunately for ETFs and individual shares, you need to buy them through a stock exchange, which can be expensive not only to investors, but also the funds and companies that are listed. Being on a stock exchange is incredibly expensive as there are heightened regulatory disclosures that are required. A company I worked for in Singapore was delisted during my time working there, and many costs were saved by delisting from the Singapore Stock Exchange. We no longer needed the same legal resource, a receptionist, marketing costs and preparing investor documentation, among a range of other expenses. This is passed through to the ETF investors as management fees, while unlisted funds reduce or eliminate many of these same costs. Sharesies investors will also recognize the burden of brokerage fees, with the Sharesies platform charging an exorbitant 1.9% on buy and sell trades. In the past, Sharesies was much kinder to investors by not charging a brokerage fee on the SmartShare ETF funds. Now, however, they enjoy clipping the ticket. Unlisted funds, such as those from Kernel commonly charge no fees for buying and selling units as they usually operate a direct-to-consumer model through their website. Foreign exchange fees can also be a burden when investing in overseas shares and ETFs, with the likes of Sharesies or Hatch charging 0.4 to 0.5% per trade. Locally listed and unlisted funds can often get a better exchange rate on your behalf, meaning when you buy a local ETF for 5 New Zealand dollars, they can change this at a better rate and invest on your behalf. That covers the three potential disadvantages for New Zealand investors putting your money into ETFs. Have a look at your portfolio and assess whether these are likely to be affecting your returns, and if so, by how much. I use a great tool called ShareSite for tracking my portfolio returns. They have offered my subscribers four months free on their annual plan, so make sure you check them out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see all of my future content in the personal finance and investing space. Do also let me know down below in the comments if anything surprised you in this video. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.